I'm RJ Nestor, business and executive coach, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how smart blocks in Rome research uh, can manipulate or rely on dates uh, within workflows and using specific commands. So when we're talking about date functions, or I should say commands, in within smart blocks, the most fundamental are date and date basis. Now, just for the record, if you're coming into this video as the first video in this sequence you've seen, check the description. You can learn how to get smart blocks in your Rome graph uh, and uh, various things like that, other videos that kind of talk you through a little bit more of what smart blocks are. But for here, I'm going to dive right in to the date functions. The most fundamental are date and date basis. Date simply inserts a date. Date basis, and we'll, I'll explain what this means as the video goes on, changes what today means uh, in the concept uh, of, of that workflow. So both of these use natural language processing. Uh, and what I mean by that is that the parameter for each of these uh, commands, the part that comes after the colon, can just be a phrase that specifies a date. So it can be something as simple as today, or three weeks from now, or last Tuesday, or next Friday. So it doesn't need to be anything super special as far as, you know, you need to have a, you need to know exactly uh, some sort of code in order to uh, call on a specific date. You can absolutely do it with natural language, which is really cool and really, really, really useful. So just to show you how they work within a command. So this is right, this is the 42 smart block I've created right here. This is what you need to define as, define a smart block workflow. I called it date and date basis commands demo. So we'll be able to run it here in a moment. Right now, I'm using just the date uh, command. So you can see how that works. Today, I say I have my angle brackets here, my percentage signs, the name of the command, which is date, a colon, which says we're going to be adding a parameter. In this case, the parameter is a natural language statement of the day that you want to display. And what date will then create for you is a, is a standard Rome double bracketed date. Okay, so that's what we'll see when we run it. And I have a few examples here. I have one for today, one for three weeks for now, one for last Tuesday, and one for next Friday. So when I run this, you can see it ran very quickly here. And it shows me the today's date of January 23rd. Three weeks from now will be February 13th. Last Tuesday was January 12th. And next Friday is January 29th. So it, it works through all of those and prints those out for me. Now, I'm going to show you how date basis works. If I add to the beginning of this workflow a date basis command, and let me show you how you can call them up. If I hit JJ first and then the angle back bracket parentheses and start typing, it's going to pull up the command so I can make sure I get them correct. So date basis even leaves me with a uh, uh, cursor blinking right beside that colon ready for the parameter. If I change the date basis to three days ago, for instance, and then I were to come down here and run this exact same workflow again, date, sorry, I needed to, uh, there we go, date and date basis commands demo. Now, if you look at the dates that show up, I said I was three days ago. The original block, when I ran it, said January 23rd. The new one says January 20th, three days ago. And all of these others, three weeks from quote unquote now, because it's three days ago, are reflect that, uh, that, that thing. However, last Tuesday and next Friday are specific days of the week and thus don't actually change when I do three days ago. That's what's so cool about the natural language processing here. If it's something that's relative to today, um, in a you know in an, in the, in the sense it's actually going to change the number, it does so. However, when I say last Tuesday from you know three days ago, which would have been Wednesday, last Tuesday still means the same thing now as it as it it, it did three days ago. So it's going to show up the same thing here. Next Friday still means the same thing now as it would have three days ago. So it shows up here. It's it's very subtle in the way that uh, that Rome Hacker has put these together and this natural language processing. Uh, and, and what it's able to to pull up here. Now, when we, when we get really into things, you can even set date basis rather than to a natural language phrase like three days ago. You can set it to DNP, which is short for daily notes page. 
And that means whatever daily notes page it is run on, that workflow is run on, um, will be counted as today. So if you change the date basis to, I'm going back to the original smart block now, and I'm changing that date basis to DNP. Now, if I were to run it, I'll hop over to my daily notes page on Windows, that's Alt D. You can do it immediately on uh, on a Mac keyboard. It's Control Shift D. Now I'm in the daily notes page here. I'll close these things up. Um, if I were to run it here, um, it's going to operate with today as a thing. If I were to run it on tomorrow, it's going to run with tomorrow as the date. And that's actually very useful for me. I use it in some of my task management stuff. Um, it makes it a lot easier uh, to keep track of, um, you know, doing templates and things like that. You can do them the day before and they're still going to show up correctly because they're on the daily notes page. So a couple of quick things to note about date basis. Um, it only lasts for the duration of the smart block. So it's default and it's default is actual today. So if you don't set anything, it's going to treat today um, as, as the date basis. And it's a lot more than just a neat trick. It'll actually work with any command that relies on date in some way. And Rome Hacker calls this, uh, using date bases like this, time machine mode. I'm going to give you a quick look at what time machine mode means in the context of two other date functions, if day of week and if day of month. These are both conditionals that are based on what day of the week or month it is. Both require additional info in the form of numbers. Um, for the day of month, obviously, it's just what number day of the month is it. For if day of week, it's what number day of the week is it with Monday equaling one and Sunday equaling seven. Maybe because I work at a church, Sunday for me always seems like the first day of the week. So I have to think about that one. But Monday equals one, Sunday equals seven is how it works with this, uh, with this conditional. Uh, it's very useful for daily routines or dashboards, as well as tax, task management. And for example, I use if day of week to populate a self-coaching workflow as part of my morning routine, but only if the day of the week is Monday. And I do the same for a weekly accomplishments workflow on Fridays. Uh, so I use date basis DNP and I can, I can populate that the day uh, before. Uh, and it's a really nice little workflow um, to make sure that I'm uh, the things that I want in my morning routine are showing up on the specific days without me having to call separate things, uh, separate workflows or separate, separate Rome native templates or something like that every day. So just to give you an idea of how that would work, um, here's a, here's an if day of demo. If the day of week equals is one, this will only show up on Mondays. If day of month is 23, this will only show up, show up on 23rd days of month, which just happens to be. And this one will always show up. So if I run this workflow, I should only see the second two of the three blocks there. If, okay. And as you can see, I only get the one that shows up on 23rds, and I only get the, and I get the one that will always show up. Um, so then if I were to uh, add a date basis to the top of this and move it around, Let's imagine here that I have date basis next Monday. Now, I'm not going to be on a 23rd of a month anymore, um, but I will be on a Monday. So that should mean that if I run it again, now I'll get the one that says it'll show up on Mondays, um, as well, as, of course, as the one that will always show up. Uh, one other little note, if I were to say, put this to daily notes page, and if I were to move over to, I'm going to use another Rome 42 feature here, jump to date, move over to this coming Monday as my daily notes page, and of course I have to do that when I get there, um, to that date, but if I were to uh, type if day of demo, now it's say, going to show up, this will only show up on Mondays, will show up. But if I were to run it on Tuesday, it won't. Only the one that uh, only the one that um, shows up, no matter what is going on, that doesn't have any conditionals on it, will show up. So I moved through that pretty quickly. 
But the general idea behind it is these are just saying if it's Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday for if day of week, or if it's the 23rd or the 16th or the 4th, um, that that you can make blocks show up. And incidentally, I showed it here on the same block as, it would also work for anything indented underneath it. Um, so if I had something indented underneath, this will only show up on Mondays. Um, it would also only show up if the day of week uh, conditional was correctly met there. So if that were true, that it is a Monday. Uh, and of course, the date basis is what moves us around there and does that. So just to summarize things here, since I did move fairly quickly, don't worry too much about the if day of week and if day of month right now, but I just wanted to show you how date basis has an impact on more than just the date command. You can use it for many different date related commands, including some others that we'll talk about in later videos. But working with dates and smart blocks is flexible and powerful, but it's also pretty easy to understand because you can insert any date with the date command. And you can shift today to mean any date within a particular workflow using the date basis command. And you can use any date related command in what Rome Hacker calls time machine mode by using that date basis command. So any, any date related um, uh, command will be affected by whatever you create as today with a date basis command. In the next video, which, uh, which will be coming out, um, I'll teach you about the input command within smart blocks. And one last thing before I go, if you like the style of my teaching or uh, of Rome concepts or smart block concepts, check out my courses. I have a course called Your Road to Rome for helping you find your path within Rome. I have powerful task management in Rome research. Um, neither one of these right now has smart blocks or Rome's native templates covered because both of those came out after I released the courses. Um, however, uh, I will be re-releasing a version two of these courses in a few weeks, probably March or April of 2021. Um, and anybody who uh, purchases version one is free upgraded into version two of the course simply because I promise lifetime access. And that's what that means to me. So uh, if this is something, if you like my style and you think you could learn a little something from those, do check out my courses. Don't feel pressured or anything like that. Uh, but uh, I just try to be helpful. And hopefully this video uh, was helpful for you as well.